All right, so we're going to look at a couple examples here with solving absolute value inequalities. And this just comes from the definition that we have. So for C is greater than zero, if the absolute value of AX plus B is less than C, then you're going to rewrite the absolute value as a double inequality. So this is a double inequality. And it's negative C, which is less than AX plus B, which is less than C. So the key to this, honestly, is um, first to recognize that you have the absolute value. And, and this is what's really important. So I'm going to do a little red marker here. Is less than a positive number. Okay? So as long as you got the absolute value less than positive number, then you're going to rewrite it using that definition right there. So... With our, with our example here, we're going to solve the absolute value of y minus 4 is less than or equal to 5. Notice that we have the absolute value is less than or equal to, which is still fine because this property above applies to less than or less than or equal to, but it's still less than a positive number. So if you notice, what I did here is I said then, and all I did was I followed what I have directly above. Negative 5 uh, is less than or equal to y minus 4, which is less than or equal to positive 5. So that's all I did is I just followed my definition. So from here, we're going to go ahead and just solve this accordingly. So we get negative 5 is less than or equal to y minus 4, which is less than or equal to positive 5. And to solve for y, all right, what we're going to do is we're going to add 4 to the middle. And if I add 4 to the middle, I need to add 4 to the left and add four to the right. So that's gonna give me negative one, which is less than or equal to y minus four, which is less than or equal to positive nine. Now to graph, you do it directly underneath. So we draw a number line. We put little marks at negative one and nine. And since this, since this is less than or equal to, we put brackets at negative one and nine and we shade everything in the middle and now the interval notation is just it's looking it's looking at us right now it would be a bracket negative one comma nine and then another bracket and that is how we solve absolute value inequalities when we have a less than symbol so let's go let's look at a little bit more complicated example so we're going to solve two times the absolute value of 7x minus 3 plus 4 is less than 12. So remember from class, the key is we have to isolate the absolute value sign first. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. That gives me 2 times the absolute value of 7x minus 3, which is less than 12 minus 4 is 8. Now I will divide both sides by 2 to give me the absolute value of 7x minus 3, which is less than 4. Okay? So now that our absolute value is isolated, we form our double inequality. Negative 4 is less than 7x minus 3, which is less than positive 4. And that's just me applying the definition. That's it. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and solve for x. So we're going to add 3 to the middle, left, and right. Negative four plus three is negative one, which is less than seven X, which is less than positive seven. And next I will divide everything by seven, which is our coefficient of the variable term. So that's gonna give me negative one seventh, which is less than X, which is less than one. And here is our double inequality solved. So now all we have to do is go ahead and graph it. So on a number line, we're going to label negative 1 7th and positive 1. Since this is less than, we're going to use parentheses. And we shade everything in between. And now we just write the interval notation. So it'll be parentheses, negative 1 7th, comma, 1, and close the parentheses. So now that we've seen a couple examples using uh, absolute value inequality, which is less than, let me, let me repeat that, let me scroll all the way back up. 
which is less than a positive number, what we're going to do is we're going to look at solving absolute value inequalities where it's greater than. All right. So give me a second here and I'm going to go ahead and write down that definition for us. Okay, so here's the situation where if we have the absolute value of AX plus B is greater than C. So once again, this C has to be positive. Then you are going to rewrite this as two different little individual problems. The first is right here. So the first thing you're going to write is AX plus B is less than negative C. You're going to include the word or. And then you're going to write AX plus B is greater than positive C. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look at an example where we have to uh, apply this property here for us. So we'll start off with a relatively simple one. So we're going to solve the absolute value of 2x minus 1, which is greater than 2. Okay, so notice here, you got the left hand side, which is the absolute values isolated. That's great. On the right hand side, C is definitely positive and you have greater than or equal to that positive number. So everything is looking good here for us. So all we have to do now is just rewrite and I'm going to rewrite it underneath. So we're going to apply this property up above. So it's going to be 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative C. Oops, sorry which is less than or equal to negative two, or two X minus one is greater than positive two, all right? So you gotta make sure that you that you are following what this property or what this definition up above at the top of your screen tells you to do. You rewrite the inequality, or you rewrite the absolute value, two X minus one, you make it less than or equal to a negative number, or same exact thing, positive number. Now, all we have to do here is just solve these two little mini problems. So, for the left, I'm just going to add one to both sides. That gives me 2x is less than or equal to negative 1. Then divide both sides by 2 to give me x, which is less than or equal to negative 1 half. So, there's one part of our answer. Or, let's do the other side now. We're going to add one to both sides. It gives me 2x is greater than 3. And then we divide both sides by 2 to give us x is greater than 3 halves. And I think, was this greater than or equal to? Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me, let me highlight here what I'm talking about. This is greater than or equal to. So hopefully, when you're writing this down, you should have been like, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Professor Float. This should have been greater than or equal to this whole time. And that's just a simple fix. You just write it in, that's all. So now that we have both sides of our solution, we're going to go ahead and graph and we're going to use just one graph. Okay. So create your number line. If you want to, you can put a zero right down the middle. Now for the first inequality, the X is less than or equal to negative one half. I'm just going to put negative one half here and X is going to be less than or equal that. So bracket, and then we're going to shade everything to the left. All right, so there's one part of my answer. Or x can be greater than or equal to positive 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 is positive, so put it on the right-hand side of 0. We're going to put a bracket. And then we shade everything to the right. So what this shading is telling us here, all right, is that we have solutions in this interval, all right, and then we have solutions on the other side in that interval, all right? And the intervals are negative infinity, comma, negative one half with a bracket. And then the other interval would be bracket three over two comma, positive infinity, all right? Now, in order for us to, to bring these two inequalities together, we use this symbol right here, which is called a union symbol. Okay, it's called a union symbol. It actually stands for the word or, which means all of your solutions can be from negative infinity to negative one half or uh, positive three over two all the way up to positive infinity. And an easy way to check yourself 
is you can either do one of two things. You can pick solutions that are inside of these two regions, or you could choose zero, and you should know that zero is going to fail because it's not in the shaded region. Okay? Let's go ahead and let's do one more. Let's do one more problem here. This one will be a little bit, uh, it'll have a little bit more to do inside of it, okay? But it should be, I mean, for us, it should be fine. So four times the absolute value of, we'll do 2x plus 3, uh, minus 3, which is greater than, and we'll do 5, okay? So once again, from here, we need to isolate the absolute value first. So I'm just going to add 3 to everything. That's going to give me 4 times the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is greater than 8. All right, now I'm just going to divide both sides by 4 to give me the absolute value of 2x plus 3 is greater than 2. And then from here, we apply our definition. All right. Now, if you remember, the definition is going to be 2x plus 3 is less than negative 2 or 2x plus 3 is less than positive 2. And we just solve these two problems independently. So I will subtract 3 from both sides. That gives me 2x is less than negative 5. Divide both sides by 2 to give me x is less than negative 5 over 2. On the right-hand side, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. That gives me 2x is less than negative 1. Divide both sides by 2 to give me x is less than negative 1 half. Now we plot both of these on our number line. All right, so there's 0. Now notice both of these are negative, so you got to know how to compare negative numbers, okay? So over here to the left is going to be negative 5 over 2. That's going to get a parenthesis, and we shade everything to the left. And then 1 half, that's going to be further to the right, and that also gets a parenthesis, and we shade everything to the right. And then finally, we just write out our interval notation. And we put the union in the middle. Okay? Now, we do got to be careful. Okay? I'm going to show you two examples here where we have to be careful. All right? The first example would be something like this. All right, when you look at this, okay, the absolute value of x plus 9 is less than negative 1 half. Now, on the surface, this kind of looks like uh, something that we can work with, right? I mean, you got the absolute value on the left hand side, that's isolated, okay? You got the less than symbol, so that's good. But here's the problem it's right here. Notice that this is a negative 1 half. Now, that is going to directly violate our rule. Okay, remember, the rule says the absolute value of AX plus B less than C for C is greater than zero. In other words, this has to be positive. Okay, clearly, negative one half is not positive. So, absolute values are never less than negative numbers because remember, the absolute value is a distance away from zero. I mean, that's really what the absolute value is. Let me draw this like little picture here. The absolute value of negative one equals positive one. The absolute value of positive one equals positive one. So it's a distance. So absolute values are never, ever less than negative numbers. So what we would say here is no solution. Okay? Now, you cannot get this confused with this example here that I'm going to write. All right, so here's this example here. The absolute value of 3x minus 8 is greater than negative 6. Okay? Now, once again, I know 
this one kind of looks like the previous problem, all right? In fact, let me write the previous one on directly underneath. So it was, I think it was x plus 9 absolute value is less than negative 1 half. Now we know this is no solution. Okay, and the reason for that, absolute values are never less than negative values, okay? However, if you look above, all right, we have the absolute value of 3x minus 8 is greater than a negative 6. So the solution to this would be all real numbers. In other words, we have infinite solutions. And if you think about it, the absolute value of 3x minus 8, remember, this is a positive value because it's a measurement of the distance away from 0. So it's positive. And positive numbers, no matter which way you look at it, positive numbers are always greater than negative numbers. And that's why we say all real numbers. So you can't just jump in and think, oh, I got an absolute value and it's greater than a number. I'm just going to go ahead and do my math. You got to take a step back and, and, and really pay attention to, okay, is it a positive number or is it a negative number? And then you have to go ahead and, uh, and write your solution out accordingly. All right. So I hope this helped. And uh, if you have any questions, just let me know.